So we're back at it. We got people who have been backpacking for 10 years. We got people who have been backpacking for zero days. We're going to hang our food up tonight for sure. There are definitely black bears around these parts. Insane. Pack it up. Hurry up. Hey everybody, Syntax 77 here. I'm in New York at a Buddhist temple in the Catskill Mountains. We're about to do three days of backpacking. We're gonna leave the temple behind. Got two nights, three days. We got some tents, got some hammocks. And yes, I am saying we, because I am not alone for this hike. It's been a little while, but I do have somebody back. You ready to make your triumphant return, Mike? Who's that? You. Oh, yo. Mike is back. I got Mike's son. If you really paid attention to the channel, he has been on it many years ago. This is his third backpacking trip. Yeah. He's got his friend Dylan, first backpacking trip. So we got first time. And I think the last time Nick was out was like three years ago. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It was the release date for Hollywood's Bleeding, so it was 2019 September. Oh yeah, we sat here. And yeah. We so we're back at it. We got people who have been backpacking for 10 years. We got people who have been backpacking for zero days. Um, we're at the Overlook Mountain Trailhead. We're going to go to Echo Lake, and we're going to see what happens. Probably get the tacks on. Reluctantly. Oh god. All right, here we go. So straight ahead. Here's a little map. I'll show you what we're doing. I think the lake is on here too. So we're about elevation 1700 feet. We're right here. We're going to go two and a half miles up. We're going to see some uh, ruins of an old hotel that burnt down a couple times in the 1930s. We're going to hit a fire tower. We're going to keep going. And after about five miles today, we'll be at Echo Lake. You can see they got a bunch of tent sites around there or de designated spots. So we're going to try to snag one of those. It is Friday right now, um, which should give us a good advantage to get a campsite. I checked the uh, logbook over here and we are logged in, but there is nobody listed for camping. So as of right now, we'll be the first ones to the lake. Last time somebody went to Echo Lake was 11-1. No so, yeah, they have you register that way. If anything happens, they know you're out there. I just use it to get an idea of whether or not we're going to be alone. And I think we are. Pretty wide open trail so far. I see a lot of leaves are down off the trees already, unfortunately, but that's all right. Didn't even mention. It is, uh, what's the day? It's basically the beginning of November. Um, so we're a little past peak foliage, but that's all right. Should be nice at the lake. Um, plan is we'll base camp, like I said, two nights in one spot at the lake. And then tomorrow we'll go up to a part of Devil's Path, which I did a couple years ago. We'll just do a little portion of it. Show these guys some ridge views without the packs on. Uh, should be a little nicer. Okay, I'm warming up now. I think it was still in the 30s when we left. It's supposed to go up to what, 68 today? And then swing back down to maybe 48. To be honest with you, the first like hour sucks. And then all of a sudden you're just gonna, your body is just gonna adapt. And it's like, all right, this is what we're doing. <laughs> and then it gives up yeah well just be happy right now because this is about the nicest trail you're going to see the whole time tomorrow will not look like this no. rock scrambling. uh tomorrow some of the roughest trails on the east coast There's no backpack that'd be nice well that's why we're doing it that way <laughs> and it'll probably turn into more of a real trail for sure once we get on the other side yeah. and go down towards the lake Oh yeah, there's a lot of downhills coming up. Basically, we go two and a half miles up, about 1,500 feet, and then two and a half miles down. Uh, at least it's supposed to be clear today. No rain in the forecast till Sunday. I mean, it's cold. But <laughs> it's cold, but I'm hot. I can tell. 
<laughs> All right, I'll take a break right on this rock. Now we gotta really fight it and try not to give, are we gonna give him the FU break or are we gonna be nice? We're gonna break. <laughs> the FU break is when, as soon as you get here, we, we stand leave. up and leave because we've been sitting. And then you're like, yeah, but then I never sit still. Yeah. It's called right. the FU break. No, we'll just take a little break. <laughs> well, sit down we could all chill. Yeah, I don't know how I'm taking a break either way. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing too. If somebody does that to you, you just say, fine, keep hiking. I'll be here. Yeah, I'm gonna take a break too. Uh, oh, man. No, it's always definitely rough the first time. Yeah. yeah you, Dude, you play basketball and stuff, right? Yeah, not uphill though. <laughs> court's flat. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We're getting up there though. I mean, you're getting close to, cl closer to level with the mountains through the trees. We've done 550 feet out of our 1400. Easy. So you've done 130 your elevation for today. Wait, one third? Yeah, we got, well, it's 1400 for a whole day. And we've done 500. Not elevation as in where we are, but how much we're climbing over the course of the day. All the up and downs uh, add up to okay. 1,400 feet. Gotcha. <sighs> but most of it is just going straight up right now. <laughs> yeah, I think we got to go to that top. Actually. Oh yeah, we got some ways to go. Well, there's another 500 right there. We are go. We're at. We're at our actual elevation is 2,500 feet and we have to get to 3,200. So. A thousand more? Yeah, a thousand more. But I think the reason this is so well graded is it was probably a carriage path to that hotel in the 1800s. That takes you off guard a little bit when that pops out of the woods, doesn't it? Yeah. It's bigger than I pictured. There it is, the Overlook Mountain House. It was originally built as a small hotel or cottage house in like 1830-ish. Went out of business, rebuilt it in the 1870s, burnt down. Rebuilt it again, burnt down three years later in 1877 or something. And then I think it sat for a while and somebody tried to rebuild it in 1921. And they ran out of money. And this would be a cool spot though. I think the last marking somewhere in here you'll see 1928 marked, and that was when they were getting close to finishing, I think. Huh. And then by I think by 1930 it was abandoned. And then New York State Department, I guess, took the land in like 1940. Huh. Yeah, you, I mean you can certainly explore it without the pack on. That is true. Take a load off. We'll check this thing out. Might as well give your shoulders a break. Well. This is, this is cool. You can't, you can't stay here, right? I, I mean, it's a hundred, if you're 150 feet from the trail or water, it doesn't say you have to be 150 feet from the hotel. Go over there. You'll just camp in the hotel. Yeah. Oh, look, fireplace. We'll do our hike and then we'll come back and then we'll take it to that here. Makes sense. Oh, you made it down there? Yeah. You just jumped down? No. no just jumped. <laughs> yeah, you just jumped from right here? There's stairs all the way there. Uh, Maybe there wasn't an elevator. Maybe there was a floor. Oh, floor. oh, no, there was floor. Look. So that was just floor. And oh, the there's where the, the, the joices would go. In there. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so that was a floor. This is just a, a new. So place. it's like split levels, probably four stories at the most in the front, yeah. it looks like. Yeah. And three yeah. stories in the back. Dude, look at this thing. Uh, Yo, we were talking about camping here and having a fire in the fireplace. <laughs> yeah, but we'll be cooking steaks in the fireplace. We do have steaks tonight, I should mention that. We're gonna be eating good tonight. We got some steaks. Yeah, that's weird, right? Yeah. And they, had, they really had, like, you think about it, they probably had a spiral staircase the whole way up. Oh, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Or at least they were planning to do that. Yeah, because they at least had a floor here, definitely. Because that looks like a back entrance. Yeah, because you know what? This ended up, I think it was 1960, Mike. Then this burnt down again <laughs> when it was abandoned. They, so all the wood floors and stuff burn out, wow. but they used to be in here. That's crazy. That, that Loki looks like elevator. 
Yeah. We got another elevator. Oh no. Well, I got his steak. <laughs> Another building to check out. Comm tower over there. That's probably what the power lines were running to the whole time. I imagine the power lines will stop at this point in the hike. Guess we'll go over there and check this building out. What is this? We had to go around. You can parkour that. Yeah, but parkour. I try. Yeah, so this is the front side that would have faced off the mountain. Probably had some awesome views originally. Imagine they would have had these trees cleared out. All right, we got to put those things back on. I'm just bringing it over to where you guys are. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll probably put ours on and go to the fire tower next. They said there's a couple other smaller buildings around, but they did say there's snake dens in them, so they're not great to visit. <laughs> there are a lot of timber uh, rattlesnakes around here, I believe. So, they, this is right around the edge of when they hibernate. I'm not right around the end of, by October, beginning of November, the rattlesnakes are, from what I've read, hibernating um, at this point. But during the summer, you'd want to be pretty careful around here. Not like space travel. Not like, like a second. Not like big ships. I think. So we're gonna go that way. After this. This is a robot. Fire towers that way, and then we'll double back. And Echo Lake is two miles that way. Downhill. Yeah. Don't worry. Downhill. It's not too bad. From here on out, you're you're you knocked your uphill out. It'll be a lot. Oh, no, I'm going uphill right now. Oh, you know, yeah. It's like mad chill. It's like little Com bits. Compare, uh, and you're yeah. probably getting used to the pack at this point, too. Yeah, a little bit. <clears throat> well, honestly, we just took like a 15 minute break, so that kind of helped me a lot. Yeah. I imagine so, yeah. Good. Right there. Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. So, this is, there's five fire towers in this Catskill region. I don't think the top of this is going to be unlocked. Um, I think it's only unlocked on the weekends, but we'll be able to go up the staircase. A little ranger station, I believe. Huh. Scenic overlook back there. And this was, you know the town that we stayed at last night? Yeah. This was originally over there. They built it in 1927. And then they moved it here in like 1950. All right, another excuse to take the pack off. Beautiful. All right, let's check it out. Did you see the view of the hotel, Mike? Yes. That's cool. Hotel. Over there. Tower, obviously. And we have about four more staircases to go. Woo! Here we are. You can see they have it locked. But like I said, I think on the weekends they have it unlocked. You can go in there. But we've still got a pretty nice view. Look at that. So our vehicle is down that way. We came to the hotel. And we're gonna double back. Down there. Dip down there. Hey, you can see the lake. Hey Mike, can you hear me? You can see the lake we're going to. Woo. 
Whew. Feels warm down here now. It's all downhill now. All right, here we go. Eagle's Cliff. Oh, well. Nineteen ninety. This allegedly eighteen fifty seven. It might be really from there. It could be. I mean the first mountain house was eighteen thirty three. Yeah. So people were I mean there was a hotel here. It's not uh it's not unfathomable that somebody wrote their name on the rock. Oh here you go. Eighteen ninety nine. Not bad little spot to take a break. Hold up. Dylan was scouting around. Thinks he sees something further down here. Oh, wow. All right, good find, Dylan. I wouldn't have come down here. No, this is cool. This is the uh, dude's thing, too. Oh, this is... This is, another flat this isn't considered a trail. We get camp here, too. It's not an official trail. You're right. Cool. A nice fire pit. Spot. Right? Wow. This is cool. Not bad. Once again, the packs are going. made it back to the intersection we're not going to go that way that's the hotel you can actually see it from right there so now we're going to go down here it'll be echo lake that's where we're going to camp for the next two nights we were at 3200 feet now we got to drive the lake is like 2000 i'm showing her performed on this end oh we got a close call head on the scanner because the tower's right there um so i guess we're going downhill yeah, that must be a repeater for something. I wonder if the uh, that's actually a fire and EMS repeater mounted on that thing that I'm getting. Oh. Foot trail. We actually got trail markers now that the trail isn't 40 feet wide. Careful, slippery on the leaves. So like leaves are real slippery when wet. Yeah, that's the new challenge. Don't, don't slide down the mountain. Uh, it was probably awesome in here a couple weeks ago with the foliage. Oh, with the foliage? All the leaves? Yeah, it was probably prime time two it, or three weeks. Yeah, we missed that. Three weeks ago, But bro. it gives you good views through the trees. Yeah. So that is an upside. You wouldn't see that in the summer. And you know what I did think of? I'm stupid. There is another trailhead that services this lake from the other mountain, mountain side, the other side. Oh. So it's possible that there's people that our camping there that came went from there yeah but at this point it's not even 12. all right the intersection's over there <laughs> we're ahead of them again so let's see what they do at the intersection well you know what we've been this doesn't even make sense the signs right there it says where to go <laughs> <laughs> I see your bright shirt. <laughs> your stupid shirt. Man. You didn't hear me tell him. He's like, where'd they go? I'm like, they're behind the rock. Oh, man. That shirt is really becoming a liability. Problem. Well, that was a failure. Yeah, yeah, All right. Well, anyway, we're at the intersection. Down here, it's 0.6 mile. We're so close. So close. 0.6 miles. Half mile downhill. So you got this. So how far was it? We just did a mile and a half from that last sign. So, to put it in perspective. No, I almost died on this. No, no. I'm not lying. The whole time you guys are going, I died, almost died. Like Yo, do not step here. It's all wet underneath. Wet leaves. Leaves and a slidey rock, and I just almost bit it. Just yeah. go on the side here. <sighs> all right, well, maybe this half mile is going to take longer than I thought. Okay. Getting a little steep as we drop into the bowl here, too. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. 
right up ahead here is the lean-to shelter. We're not going to take that. Although if we did get rain, which I don't, we're not supposed to, but if we did, that'd be a great place to hang out. There's a trail that goes around the lake. It's about a mile long total. I remember earlier I said you can't camp within 100 feet, 150 feet of water or the trail. But there's a stipulation to that. If the um, New York State Conservation Department puts up a camp here disc, it's a yellow disc, you're allowed to camp there. So we're gonna look for those. From looking at my map, on the opposite side, there is a stream that feeds this. What do we got here? That was a yellow disc, it's a foot trail. That's foot trail, yeah. And it's so, so yeah, it'll look similar to this, but it'll have a, um, a tent on it. The only problem with this is that somebody could show up, especially tomorrow. This, I mean, we could walk over and cook the steak here. Oh yeah, you do and whatever you want. Smell. I mean, honestly, Awesome. If you want to, we can pick a closer campsite to this and use this area. It's not a bad fire pit. Look at that. You found the first one? It's quiet down here. Nice. Not bad. Check out the shelter a little bit. Oh, there's a painting of the shelter in the shelter. Fancy. And then Mike spotted this. We thought somebody might be here, but upon further inspection, it's just a very old school. That's a big pad and a sleeping bag. Maybe as an emergency thing for somebody if they're in trouble. Black bear fact sheet for backcountry users. Bears are common in the Adirondacks and Catskills. Bears are intelligent and curious. How to avoid attracting bears. We're going to hang our food up tonight for sure. There are definitely black bears around these parts. Uh, avoid walking trails at night. All right. And here's the painting of the... Uh, it's a nice painting. All right. Not bad. But we're going to head over this way. Seven spots. From looking at my topo map, it looks like there's a stream of fresh water that comes in somewhere around here. So maybe we hit seven, maybe around the six guy. There should be a stream. Yeah. So here's an example of your camping desk. Oh, wow. You see that back there? Yeah. They got a big old grate? Yeah. Oh, I hope ours has something like that. What do you think? We got something here? We're in the pines now. It totally changed. So this is the stand of pines we saw from over there. And there's plenty of trees for hammock. And where's the disc? This has got to be an established spot. I don't know why there isn't a disc. It right oh, it here. says number five. This is it. So I can walk down and scout around. There's probably a stream over there. Worst case scenario, we could totally take it from the pond. It's just that it will beat my filter up a little quicker. And taste-wise, I'd rather have the stream feeding the pond. But it's not the end of the world if, I can, if the stream's not flowing. Like this? Oh, look, there's already a grate in here. I just have to look for a spot for a tent. Yeah. Oh, well, that's true. If there's not a flat spot for a tent, we can keep looking. That's true. I would. Let's leave the pack here for a second and kind of semi-claim it for a second. And then we can run down and see what else is yeah. um, further down. Yeah. I like that idea. I mean, you guys can even chill if you want. We can scout it. Yeah. <sighs> Take a load off. You earned it. Uh, Why don't me and you just run down to the next site and we'll pick the best of the two. And if these guys are sick of us, they can have this tent site. We'll go over here. Okay. I'm kidding. I hope. I bet you there's a spot over there. Yeah, because it's harder to get to. Yeah, I want to know what it is. Maybe It'll probably be less use, so there'll probably be less like rock chairs. I'll tell you if it's worth it. Okay. You stay here. I got these boots that can go. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got better water protection than me. Yeah. We'll let Mike scout this one out. Nice. Sounds like we might be going over there. What? What do you mean? Oh, my God. That is like completely different, bro. Right, it's better. Completely different. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, that is that the way to go? All right, nice. Yo, is insane. Pack it up. Hurry up. <laughs> Pack it up. Don't worry. There's only one way to get in here, Mike, and they gotta walk past this. Holy shit. All right, I promise. We're done after this. Let's do it one more time. Yo, that's real, man. So that tree you saw back there, whatever beaver did that, did this. Crafty. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, what did he do? Damn it up with sticks? He, rocks? Yeah, all this. Well, see, this this is probably rocks people have thrown on top of it. But he definitely did that. Yeah, it was. This was probably originally a beaver dam. You can see all the sticks. People have probably thrown rocks on it to turn it into a bridge. But, like, but that's a better example. Yeah. Yeah. No. That like that's like that's like an actual beaver's dam. Yeah, they'll dam that stuff. Up. You can see how much water it really holds them. It's crazy. Cause like, I'm surprised they can carry those sticks and like. Yeah, look okay. Well, they'll take that whole trees down and just hope it falls in the right direction. I mean, it's just, look at the look at the, the view, and you have no wind right here, and like you can see everybody coming in, and like it's just such a beautiful. Oh, picture. somebody playing a stump game here. I was gonna say, there's no chairs, but they're here. That's pretty awesome, Mike. Somebody left a trowel. All right. I'm not moving now. It's going to be a big fire. Got a proper couch. So we have to find lots of wood which there's so much dead tree right here i'm actually surprised it looks like we're on better luck of wood than i thought take the damn apart <laughs> look wait, somebody even left some for us nice all right well i'm gonna take a moment to compose myself to... Yeah, everybody take 30 and just enjoy it yeah i say that is a great idea nick soak it in <sighs> mike's got a little twig pile going already there and some rocks set up. We have the two grates with us. Oh, I just noticed there's a grate behind you, although it looks a little beat up, but it would work right next to your arm. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. But let me get uh, mine. This is the one that Mike gave me. Was it Christmas or my birthday? I forget. The, you gave me this bushcraft oh, yeah. gr uh, grate. And it's meant, there's all different ways you can set it up. You can do all these crazy configurations, but we're going to keep it pretty simple because we have a bunch of rocks to prop it up on. So, it just, it packs down like this and it goes in this nice canvas bag, which is nice when it has soot all over it to pack it away. But let's see how that guy looks here. <laughs> three pieces yeah so it's really just no two these two grates yes sir and uh you, like i said you can do all kinds of stuff but in our case we're just gonna prop it on the rocks over here we'll figure it out as we go and then we have one more that's like the coleman style i guess to uh nick or dylan one of them have that one uh yeah all right sweet yep absolutely so we'll have a nice little fire station or cooking station set up Beautiful view. Still got to look for where Mike and I want to put the hammocks. Um, and Nick and Dylan, they've uh, gone off foraging for firewood. They're on their own little adventures. Last time I saw them was somewhere on that bank over there. But they must have went deep in the woods. But I gave them my saw. And they're uh, out there scouting around. But their spot looks perfect. Especially for their size tent. I think it's just about perfect. Nice little depression there. No roots, no rocks. And it's pretty soft. So that's going to feel good. You need any help with fire stuff? Yeah, dude. I think I got it. This is going to be beautiful. Oh, that looks great. Yeah. I like light it right here and I'll just... So like this is all that like... Um, little bark. You know, birch bark that I was peeling and just put in my pocket when we were getting closer to here just in case there yeah. wasn't any birch. And I don't really any, see any in this area, which I was smart enough to do. Yeah, see it paid this off. This stuff like flares up even when wet. Nice. And then a bunch of little twigs, little 
It'll puff up real quick. Oh, I love it. Send a message to my wife to let her know that this is our camping location. She'll have that peace of mind. I don't even know if there's cell phone service here. I'm not going to bother finding out. It's probably not. Although that tower is right over there, but oh, it, yeah. surprisingly with that tower, if you're coming out here, I don't know what service that is, but it's not Verizon because we were right next to that tower and it did nothing for us. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. That looks nice. And then we can just push coals right underneath. Yeah, I gotta make it longer. Oh, you know what? They probably won't care. I'll dig, you want me to dig up the um, rack out of their pack and then we can really see size-wise what we're working with? Yeah, we can do that. Why not? Both of them just have these little budget packs. Super cheap. I'm not even gonna bother telling you the brand name because it changes all the time. You'll see this same exact pack with a different brand name on Amazon. It rotates, it seems, every few months. But you know what? They actually work pretty well considering that they're not $300. Especially just somebody just trying to figure out if they like it. Yeah, and they don't want to invest a bunch of money. So this is that other one. Just the fold-out one. Probably a bit heavier, but just like that. So there's our steak-making materials. Right there. And there and there. Alright. Looking good. There's some wood back over at that one spot. We're probably about to grab that. Oh, uh, okay. Not a whole lot going on over there? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I was walking around back behind me here, too. It's a little pick clean. It probably does get some action. Well, it definitely gets some action around here in the summer. Yeah. No, I was like, oh, that was a cave over there. It's not a cave? Like a mini cave. It looks like, like a mini cave. And then like oh really? It goes deeper. Oh, bear den. That's what I thought. That's, <laughs> it might be. That's literally what I said. It was under like stone. He was like, "Yo, I think I see a paw." <laughs> I'm like, "Time to go." Because bears can they can fit in like a cram space? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's like any other animal. Like, You'd be surprised. It was like surprised. a hole, and then it got blocked off, and it was like this. And yeah. It just goes deeper. Wow. Well, there's at least there's either a rattlesnake or a bear. Yeah, that definitely keeps him warm. Uh, yeah. We have to have a lot of sticks if you're gonna have a fire tonight. So yeah, it looks like a good setup. And you can rotate, right? You got your one that's a little higher, your ones that are lower. If one gets out of control, you can swap them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Did you guys get any wood? We're about to go grab some from right over there. Yeah, right, right. Cause there wasn't really nothing up there. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I should get some water actually while they're dealing with firewood got the filter here i actually went and got a brand new catadine be free system well not the system i just got a new cartridge um because my other one was pretty old so i just and i hadn't used it in forever so finally got that back in business i put it on this two liter bag um it's a different brand it's hydro pack but the threads are the same so it's a little bigger than the um, bag that i had with the other one before the only problem is i am a bit of an idiot <laughs> i'm definitely an idiot but um yeah it it's shining right now the stream that i saw on the map i wasn't paying attention to the actual topo lines um that's not a stream feeding this that is a stream leading away from this exactly where we crossed over so i think our only option is to get water from the pond and thank god we do have a filter because i think a lot of times a lot of these streams and stuff I'm not advocating you don't filter it, but I think you would get away without filtering a lot of the stuff that at least I come upon. But number one thing that carries Giardia, which is a pretty nasty thing to, um, to get, it'll make you pretty sick, um, is beavers. And it looks like there's some beaver activity around here, especially because we saw that tree with the bite marks on it. So definitely want to filter this water um, or, you know, we could risk getting sick. Um, which, fun fact, it takes, from what I've read, 7 to 14 days for Giardia to actually incubate and then get you sick. So you wouldn't get sick on the trip, but about a week or even more from now, I probably have some uh, gastrointestinal distress. So, enough about that. Let's find somewhere to fill this water up. I don't want this stuff getting in my filter, though. Kind of no need for that. At least the water is nice and clear. I mean, the water looks nice. 
over there on the other side of the dam it's flowing away and it's not flowing too well so it's a little stagnant I'm not gonna mess with that but there we go that's good enough I'll just carefully dip in with this guy and try to avoid getting too much crap in there I'll just go down deep and keep going like that until it's full there we go Looks pretty free of junk. Pop that guy in there, twist it on, and the flow rate on this thing is pretty fast because it's got just a bunch of hollow fiber membranes exposed inside of it. And I'll just go ahead and fill everybody up since they're being productive with the firewood. Alright, this makes me feel safe. I can set up my hammock now. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. You got a bottle, I'll fill everybody up. Yeah, there we go. Mine's full. And we'll do that three more times and we'll be back. Safe hydration levels. You guys look like you racked out some piles of wood. Uh, just all right there. Okay, nice. All right, awesome. Yeah, yeah take a break. I filled your water up. I filled everybody up. Awesome. You're good, and this is full. All right. The time has come. Mike and I are gonna set up the hammocks. They're gonna set up the tent. I already showed you that. Um, I think we're going waterfront property. Mike's got this section here, this tree to that tree. He's got a little bit of a slope, but if he gets in from this side, he should be cool. And then I'm gonna go over here. Waterfront as well. So, trees are a little thick, but luckily I got 15 foot tree straps, so we're all good. Um, this tree doesn't look amazing, but we checked it out a lot and we're good. It is alive and well rooted, uh, even though it's missing that bark there. So, that's that. Hammock time. You know, just went simple with the half wood hammock that I usually do. There's no bugs out here anyway, from what I've seen, so that's good. And uh, Mike went titanium straps, super light, looking good. I went with the uh, Dyneema beetle buckle, a little heavier, but that's all right. There's still only a few ounces. <laughs> We'll get those up. All right, at least I got 15 footers. Yeah. I think this is the biggest, the thickest tree I've hung on in quite some time. Much better. All right, good night. Good night. Let me know when dinner's ready. Okay. Uh, nope, I can already feel my butt would be cold in about 10 minutes. The breeze shifted. It feels like it's coming from the woods instead of the lake now. Yeah. And mac and cheese. Steak and mac and cheese tonight. Oh, here, here. Yeah, Mike and I just oh, both brought canister stoves. He's got an MSR guy. Propane or butane? It's a ISO butane mix. So butane. Butane and um and, and a propane. Which okay. propane's better at cold temps, but the pressure's too high for these little canisters. Yeah, so the butane makes it nice. Yeah, so it's just like a little balance of uh Isn't butane like actually cold. Yeah, it's butane is yeah, what's the boiling point is pretty crazy. But yeah, it reach like probably 400, 500. It, uh, I have no idea, but it will, it'll boil. That thing boils pretty quick, right, Mike? Yeah. And I just have a little budget one as well. So between the two of us, we'll be able to knock some water out. But so what kind of water you use? Just the ones we have in our bottles? Yeah. Then you refill it. Honestly, usually I'll dip into the water and just cook with it. But because we're getting from that pond, I'll probably use the filtered water as well. Yeah. Filter and boil. That way I don't have to worry about it fully coming to a boil. I'm gonna throw this bear bag up. Oh, 
the, like the line over here. You're thinking ahead? The sun's still out. You can't put the bear bag up. <laughs> All right, that's smart. I learned from last time. Right here. Yeah? Oh, you already got a little throw bag? Yeah. Nice, I will get out of the way in case it comes back. Learn my lesson with that. Got it. Right? Yeah. All right, sweet. All done. Cool, cool. Got a compound over there. So, got Nick and Dylan over here in the Nemo tent that we've used many years. It's the uh, green one. They just don't have the rain fly on yet. So that'll be good for them. Oh man, look at this. That's a ribeye. <laughs> that baby's thick. Vacuum sealed and everything. Very nice. My hammock that my lazy butt has still not completed, but whatever. And that's what it'll end up like. The uh, dream hammock. I haven't seen that guy in a while. Two years ago, I guess. Love it. So dream hammock he's got. He's got the hammock gear, 20 degree. And our low is probably 48. So he's going to be super toasty. He's got a regular sleeping bag inside. That works just fine. It's just that you need the quilt underneath so that you don't compress it down and get a cold butt. He's got his tarp up, which I'll do one of these years too. And uh, he can pull this snake skin off and be ready to go. And there's his uh, Kevlar straps, super light. Setup looks nice, Mike. Came down from there, did a sharp turn. There's the shelter way over there. And then we cut right over here to home. Not feeling the table now? I don't know, maybe we should. But I don't know where we get a flat rock except stealing it from up there. I'll walk around with you. What's, I mean, you got nothing else better to do. But I got this. I don't think you've been with me since I had this. So simple. What is it? Open. Okay. It's not very complicated, but it makes Talk a difference. It. It's the bomb. What does it do? What does it do? Here. Open it. Like pull it open. It's really just like a car antenna. Yeah. No bending over, no hyper hyperventilating, no breathing in smoke and ash. Yeah. Oh. It works really good and it concentrates That's it because cool. the tip is really small. Yeah, all right. Well, and anytime it starts dying down, you just hit it with that a few times. Yeah, that's kind of neat. It I'm works good. Try it out. Go. You lighten? Yeah. One shot? One shot. All right. And I gave you a bonus tool, so I really believe it's going to happen now. It's the stuff I got. See how flammable it is? Yeah. So that's not a fire starter, it's just your birch, right? It's the birch. Birch bark? Yeah, birch bark just lights up so fast. Yeah, there's oils in there. Awesome. It's, it's, well, it's awesome. Good call on pocketing that. Mm -hmm. All there is to it. I'm yeah. going to throw it with the bow just for fun. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't even really need to now, but if it starts to die down, you can hit it with that. But that birch bark's probably going to go for a little bit. I like how the whole point of that is to not be in the fire. And he's, gonna... <laughs> he's in the fire pit. You know what? That's an excellent point. Uh, that's a good point. i got to give you writing credit. That was an excellent point. There you go. Thanks, dude. He said, yeah. just get in the fire. <laughs> um, I'm just going to put this designated by the by the uh, trowel that somebody left here. Because okay. you might need that later, so I won't keep it on me. Cool. Looks good. Yeah. Put this stuff on. But it's already going real nice, Mike. Look at that. We got the racks over there waiting to go. Got steaks. I like it. I think our target is to start cooking the steaks and the macaroni and cheese at like 5 30. Spark makes good cold, right? Heck yeah. And I do have a surprise for you guys. You forgot your speaker, right? For music. But I do have a projector and several movies. Look we just have that. to, yes. And we didn't set my tarp up, up so that could be a screen. Yeah. So I got three movies randomly. I got Step Brothers. Seen it. 
That's a good It's rewatchable, uh, right? That's a really yeah, I'll watch that. Movie. I'll watch that. That's perfect. All right. That's All right. that's good. It happened to be on there. It wasn't on purpose, but I got Goonies. And super weird. You were talking about aliens today. I swear I didn't do it on purpose, but it also happens to be on there. I have Alien, but that's a little creepy for the woods. Huh. But yeah. I would do it. Yeah. Nice, healthy sprinkling of salt and pepper. Some fat boy ribeyes. Looking good, Mike. Where'd you get the steaks? Costco. Costco. They look awesome. And I cut them in half, so it cooks easier. Oh, you cut them in half. Uh huh. They're, oh, they were even thicker. They're, thick. they're yeah, they're they're like two inches. Oh god. Or a whole inch or something. There are two of these basically. I cut them. By the way, your shirt is still blowing out saturation on this video. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally clipping the color channel yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it is 5.30 now. <laughs> it is 5.30 now. The sun has disappeared right behind Mike. Speaking of bright yellow, um, the sun's going down over there, so it'll be technically setting soon. The nice thing about this spot is that in the morning, past his bright yellow coat, we will get um, sun very quickly through this opening down into this bowl. Um, so that will be nice. We'll get light first. Right now, we're, we're dark the first. Um, they're still getting light over there, but I'm thinking in a little bit, if we're lucky, we might get some Alpen glow, which occurs opposite of the uh, horizon on uh, that ridge there. Maybe a little purple pink kind of vibe. You never know. The sky is a little overcast, but the moonrise and moonset is basically when we're awake tonight, so I don't think we would see stars anyway. It's time. The uh, coals have been pulled over. The grates are growing on. It's time. Oh, that's perfect sizing right there. We got the one that's slightly higher. If any of them get out of control, we can flip them to the back. Now I gotta get a fire back here going just to keep it going for tonight. You pop your bellows, son. That works good. Uh, That's crazy. No, it's pretty concentrated. You could probably hit it from back here without stepping in there, too. But it's like a blowtorch, right? Yeah, I like it. No, yeah, it'll bring it back to life. Man, stakes are going on. Oh, man. Oh, I got a boil. Right. It's a long-handled spork, so you can actually get in the bottom of the bag. Pro tip. Stir. Seal these up, let it sit five, stir it, let it sit another five. And honestly, these are gonna stay real hot because I have this little insulating bag. Um, they're gonna stay hot for a while. So basically, whenever the steaks are ready, the mac and cheese will still be hot and good. Hmm. I think I hear Nick and Dylan coming back. Let's see if they found the frisbee. Mission complete. You got the got the frisbee? Yeah, we did. Steaks are on. Mac and cheese is working. That will be some coals and a fire in the back. That's nice. Yeah. So the fire won't be neglected while we're cooking in the front there. We got the mac and cheese going. Oh yeah, double mac on deck. Already got the first flip. It looks good, Mike. Yeah, she's done good. It looks real good. That means over. Still got the fire in the back. Mike still got his glove on, so he's got a nice dexterity for rotation. Yeah, they do. They look nice. Now they say the secret to any good steak restaurant is not the steak, but good steak knives. So in our case, we don't have good steak knives, but we have dollar store ones, which out here is pretty good. So a little bit of that. 
The stakes are rested. 548. That's amazing. It's getting dark. It's beautiful. Well, thanks for procuring the steaks and yeah, and cooking. Really it's much appreciated, Mike. Stick up that, like smoke in it too. Yeah, you yeah. picked up a little smoke flavor. Uh -huh. Beautiful. I'm going right into the steak. Well, cuts well. <clears throat> oh man, bumping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is some smoke in there. Uh-huh. Whatever random wood we ended up with underneath there. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mac and cheese. How do you, what do you think of the mac and cheese? I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah. For being powder stuff. Right? Mm-hmm. I haven't even tried the mac and cheese. I swear, I swear, like, part of hiking is just because I like to eat out here. Uh-huh. <laughs> something about it. Just, like, cooking your own food in the middle of nowhere. Period. Mm -hmm. It's, like, something badass. What like, time do you think you're getting up tomorrow? We do have to talk about that, Mike. What? Well, it's not even sun. It's not even light out until... Seven. Seven. Yeah, seven is, like, civil twilight. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean... I'm probably, we'll probably do quick breakfast and head out. So get up at like, mm, seven-ish or whenever. So yeah, I can go better like nine. Yeah. Mike's got some more firewood collected, which is awesome. I think our sleep should be good though. We got light in there, we got The moon is out. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of. And over here, we have the projector. All right, turn off the lights, see if you can even see this. Hey, Dale. Hey, Nancy. Do you make me a grilled cheese sandwich? Sure. No. Dale just ate. He's testing it to see how much he can get away with. I see. I'm hungry. <laughs> Nobody else is up yet, but it's uh, about 7.30. I woke up at 6.30, just been hanging out right from the hammock, watching the clouds roll in. Uh, but I think I'm gonna start getting set up for breakfast and see if anybody else wakes up.
I hear movement over there in the tent. Mike is up. I got my death wish coffee, so that's good. Ah, oh, still hot. And I haven't tried this before, but mountain berry granola. I'm lazy right now. I don't want to mess with my stove. All you got to do is pour cold water in here. It kind of turns into milk and granola. So I'm going to give that a shot and save my uh, ramen noodles that I was going to have for a snack later, maybe. Ice cold pond water. Should be good. <coughs> Yeah, today might be a best day. Yeah? Yeah. I guess so. It's gonna get warm today. Yeah, so right now it's 60 degrees. It only went down to 52. And I think we're gonna pop up towards 70. I'm gonna get my radio and get an update on the weather. It's just the wind that sucks. Yeah. Weather scan. And for the Eastern Cat Skills today. Oh, there you go. Perfect timing. Southwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy. Lows in the upper 50s. South winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Hello. Sunday, cloudy with a 30% chance of showers. Highs in the upper 60s. Southwest winds around 10 miles per hour with gusts. Yep. You hungry? I mean, uh, you want coffee or anything? Coffee? I got death wish if you want some. There's enough for everybody. Caffeine? Uh, I'll take a little bit. Black coffee? Sure. Just suck it down. Well. It'll be the only time that it's tolerable is out here in the woods. You'll be like, ah, eh, I'll deal I, with it. I, I, I thought about it. I'm like, I'm not so. If they don't like the taste of it, they might as well get punched in the face by some caffeine. Mikey going ramen noodles? Sticking with the plan for breakfast? Yeah, I'm not even hungry right now. Me neither, but I'm just jamming it in. I'll probably just get you some ramen and call it a day. Alright. A little coffee. Packing up for our little day hike. Uh, no threat of rain today, but just for peace of mind, I'm going to put down my tarp. And besides, if we watch another movie tonight, I'm going to want it down. Which worked pretty well on the that size tarp that we um, used last night. The movie was nice. So. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely picking up a little bit. For sure. You rolling? Yeah. All right, here we go. It is a little after 10. And we are on the trail. Got some day packs. We'll see what happens. A bit overcast. There's finally some blue in the sky. Be careful right there. Okay. And we're just navigating across the beaver dam here. And we'll see how far we get into this. It's going to be about four and a half miles to get us to the first view, which would make a nine mile round trip. Or we could push an additional one and a half miles and we'll cross Indian Head Mountain and Twin Mountain. That will put us at six, which would be, yeah, based on our timing, maybe, maybe pushing it a little bit, but we'll see. Back to the intersection. So we just did 0.6 uphill to here. And at this point, we're headed this way. That's where we came from last night. And this Devil's Kitchen lean to 2.2 miles. Um, has water. So maybe we can check that out. And then ultimately in this direction is the, is the ridge line. So we got a little flat section here. We're gonna drop down a few hundred feet, or maybe 500 feet. Wow, it is hazy over there. See that? I can kind of make out that water we were looking at yesterday from the cliff, mm -hmm. but it's a little tougher to see than yesterday. Nice little green vibe after 
a mile of dead leaves. Walking right into the cloud now. So the up part from this shelter is a, a little under a mile and a half and 1,400 feet of L. It's not long, it's just steep, it's but steep. we were talking about this, so. It's not a very, probably gonna be a very good view of it. No. no. So is it worth going up and probably not seeing anything or should we just like kind of cook some, some food down here and then go back and just spend the whole time finding wood to like really have a and good just, fire tonight? And just have a camp day. That way we don't kill you guys and there'd be no view when we get up there. So we were just talking about that. And then you don't have to be killed for no reason. I'm down with it. As long as you guys promise we're going to find wood and you're going to break sticks this time. And I I feel like I just ate, so I, I, if we did that, I would even just wait till I got back to eat. Have a late lunch, because I was planning on like a 2 o'clock lunch anyway. You hear that? Well, I hear water, and that is rain. But we are less than a 1,000 feet from the shelter. I didn't bring a rain jacket. Those guys did, so they're putting that on. I'm going to make a run for the shelter. Well, maybe not run. These are loose rocks, and I've made that mistake before and fallen on my face. But get up here, get myself under a roof. And there it is, right over there. Looks like a couple of people in it. So the two people that were here headed for Echo Lake as well, and we saw two decent sized groups headed there too, so they will have some activity on the lake tonight, but we already got our spot, so I'm not worried about that. I think at this point we're going to have lunch or something like that right here, let the rain go by, and based on this cloud cover, I think we're going to bail on going up to the Outlook because honestly, I don't think we're going to get a view. Might be more fun to spend some time at camp. Yeah, instead of killing these guys and then being like, well, look at the clouds. Yeah. It makes more sense to just chill. I'd rather then, stare at that lake. And collect wood and chill tonight again. Yeah, get some lake views. Yeah. See if the fog rolls into that bowl. Yeah. That'd be cool looking. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all about just like trying to like teach you how to be outside and like what it's like to be hiking. Yeah. That's the goal. Cool. I mean, great views are amazing and, and important, but just to see if you even, you know, now you know what to work on too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Skies have cleared, we timed that perfect. We're actually up to the top of that hill. We're gonna take a little spur trail. It looks like, I'm assuming there's a view down here and the clouds have lifted, so maybe we'll get one. Ah, uh, that's nice. Oh yeah, look at that ridge of dark clouds right there. Awesome. Another little shower getting ready to break. Yeah, they got some big boats in that channel, dude. Yeah, oh yeah. The mystery body of water. Ah, <sighs> well, it's all flat and downhill from here. Get back to camp and see how jumping it is. All right, I'm finally hungry. I think it's noodle time for me. You guys are eating your biscuits and gravy? Yes, sir. All right, all right, all right. These are, you already stirred them once, right? I think it's been five minutes. Oh yeah, yours was the first one, right? I think. Or yeah. I don't know. I don't know. This was the first one. Oh, that was the first no, one. I think that was the second one. He just told you. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, you take a bite if it's good. If it's not, you just let it sit another five minutes. A little spicy noodle. Your biscuits and gravy or no? 
Honestly, I can pretty much see the bottom almost, so nice. yeah, I kind of killed mine. Dude, it sticks to your ribs, man. Nah, it is good. It definitely fills you up for a little. It'll definitely fill me up till dinner. There you go. Oh, are we watching a movie tonight? I have Alien. Yeah, cool. I have we Alien watch, or uh, Goonies. We can watch the Goonies. I'll do Goonies. There you go. Salvage mystery boards. Hold on. Glad we have a saw. This is the kind of stuff you can get if you're not packing the saw. Got another big one for you. Awesome. I'll cut it. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, there you go. Good ball. Yeah, okay. Oh, right into the thigh. That was smart. All right. We have an injury. Yeah, okay. Next, next doing the fire tonight. No fire starter. Not allowed to say first light. Nah, you can start. And you can start talking after I like. He's concentrating. After I built it. He's got TP on TP. Yeah, that's the whole point. The first TP is gonna start, and then it's gonna blow up the second. Yeah, I you know. It's, and then there's gonna be a third. One. I have faith in you. Your dad, I don't know. I have faith. That's tough love, but you know, I feel I feel like he's a little skeptical. I definitely got faith. I think this is gonna work. It's definitely getting Dylan. It might might be smoking him out. Ah, I see the charger. Lights his pants on fire. Why are you gonna light my pants? <laughs> he was making fun of me getting in the fire. I know, and he's all up in it. He might as well just be like, in it. Trying to get that first layer. That's a nice core. See, what is this? Didn't need it. Waste of time. Yeah, no fire starter. I didn't need a lighter or anything. Impressed. No lighter? No lighter. Use the coals. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Look at that. You did a good job with the coals. On the first try. Feel better? Much more protected. Nice. Yeah, those winds are picking up, so we're thinking combined with the rain, possibly overnight, could be a little rough. So we're batting down the hatches here. Yeah. More real estate inside. Yeah, that'll work. May not be pretty, but it'll work. Making a new movie screen with the uh, shank that uh, Nick and Dylan made. This is the wrong side. Shank's not sharp enough? No, the shank went right through. You could probably use the shank to thread it. Almost like you were doing a, le a leather punch. That's a movie screen. What is it? It's Tyvek. It's the stuff you're supposed to wrap a house with. But it's... But what do you we use it just as a ground mat. Super it's light. Super keeps you dry. But yeah, it's nice under your hammock so you can get out with bare feet and all that stuff. Just like that, it is dark. Mike's got the made a little corral for his stove to keep the wind off of it. Yeah, little clouds covering the moon. But boiling some water. They're gonna do chicken teriyaki and rice uh, from Peak Refuel. That looks banging, and it's got 40 grams of protein, which is legit. And. New to me, I'm going home style chicken and rice. Another uh, peak refuel. fuel. Then we'll probably pop a little movie on our projector screen and uh, enjoy the fire and that'll be that. 
So, that's about where we're at right now. All right, going to Goody's. I mean, being out here in the morning, it's really not too cold. Yeah. Unless, like, it's just because your body's so used to it under over the night. That's possible. That you wake up. And you do kind of adapt. Yeah, you're already kind of used to it. Because I feel like when I used to leave the house for school in the morning or something, or... Yeah. It was... Oh, my God, it was so cold. But it I'll, really doesn't even feel that bad. I'll go home after a backpacking it's trip, really and I'll feel really, like, hot, especially, like, sleeping at night, because you do get used to, like... Yeah. It being cooler, so like you adapt a little bit. lower than it was yesterday. It's much shorter. It looks like we in the clouds. Yeah, like I feel like we would only be seeing like six feet in front of our face if we were up on that ridge right now. The one without the thing. A little bit of rain this morning. Packing up slowly. We're pretty much down to the tarps and the tent. Um, but yeah, it's just been raining on and off. Started about 1.30 a.m. And here comes another band right now. So I might be eating breakfast underneath my tarp. We'll see. Um, well, we got a battle of the skillet scrambles this morning. Mountain House versus uh, Peak Free Fuel. Breakfast skillet. And I got mine over there. Give us the calories we need to get out of here, hopefully. Word. A little hot sauce, a little eggs, a little rain. Eat this, and then I guess we'll pack up and roll out. Hopefully this blows out. I think we're about to get fogged out. Yeah, when we're up at the top of the ridge, we're definitely not going to be able to see. Well, look, it's coming down. It's going to be a water level, it looks like. You see it spilling in? Yeah. You need my water too, right? Let me have your pole. You just remember this one now. I 
think we're clear. Campsite is empty. Fire is out. Rain gear is on. Time for a wet hike out. Across the dam. Never saw the beaver. Nobody is left but us. Last on the lake. Objective one complete. Cheapest part of today actually is right there. <sighs> Going to backtrack out the same way, so it'll be a gradual uphill to the hotel. And after that, that's the end of the uphill, which I'm okay with. It's not the end of the rain yet, though. Hoping that ends soon. Right over there. All downhill from here. Oh, there's the tower. You can barely see that. You can't even. You can see maybe halfway up it. The tower? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can cut through it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we can go straight through it. Why not? A little five seconds away from the rain. Can't blame you for that. I'm just staying right here. <laughs> it's a bear den. You got you got flame broiled cheeseburger in your future. Oh. Focus on the goal. Yeah. Warm clothes. Warm clothes, dry car, hot cheeseburger. Oh yeah. Sounds great. I'm definitely changing somewhere down here. Come on, parking lot. That does look like the trailhead through the fog. Nick is way ahead of us. Dylan is somewhere back there. <laughs> but we're just about there. Back to the Buddhist temple where it all began. <laughs> did it? It did. <laughs> you, you look real happy. Just been standing here waiting for us. I thought you'd be in the porta potty, dude. Uh, yeah, that's what we said. You check out the temple? Did you go do a service? Yeah, I hear you. I thought it was like smear to here, so I ran all the way. Yeah, I, like I figured, yeah, you were you were moving. You were moving good. Never gonna do it again. Nope. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll wait a month to ask you if you're ever gonna do this again. Because <laughs> I know what the answer is right now. Mm -mm. But you'll be talking about this day for a long time. <sighs> You might actually remember this in five years, but you're gonna hate it today. That's why right. Sean calls it type two fun. You don't like it, but then you, that's the thing you talk about and remember with your with your with like Nick first. You have fun remembering have it. Fun remembering type one fun is like a roller coaster, but you're not gonna talk about it in five years. So I'll check in in five years. 
but that about wraps it up we made it we're soaked we're hungry and uh i think we're about done so that is echo lake and i am ready to replace some calories so i think we're gonna wrap this one up till next time i'm syntax 77 and right now it's cheeseburger time